So tonight I want to talk about what has, well, one of the, one of the components of what has kept life ongoing. Um, now we know the Lord definitely would have a hand in that because um, he is the creator. He's the maker of all things. So we can simply just make that statement and leave it there. But I want to touch on one of the attributes of God. It's not only is it an attribute of God, but it's also a way of man that's been given to man from God that ensures that man stays in a condition to where God blesses and he doesn't just curse and destroy everything. We know in Genesis, the man, the man of God, Noah, experiences the first global judgment where God destroys everything as an act of judgment. It's, it, it said that he repented God that he even made man. He was that upset with his with creation because it was not creation was not worshiping God and honoring God and creation was not showing the goodness of God the glory of God through creation acting the way that it was supposed to so God only preserved Noah and his wife and Noah had three sons and their wives so only eight people go into that boat as far as humans and they survive and they go into that boat and then they come out of that boat under the permission of the Lord and then they begin to restart life. But we see even in that, I want to go ahead and get into this. Um, there's a scripture that I want to start, want to start with and... Um, it's going to serve as a basis of what we're going to talk about tonight. So in Proverbs chapter 10, um, there's a verse that I want to um, focus on. And we're going to build on this by the grace of God as the Lord leads. Um, so Proverbs chapter 10, verse 24. Verse 24. Um, Proverbs chapter 10. No, that's not the one. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 27. It says, The fear of the Lord prolongeth days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. So we see that by the Spirit here, Solomon reveals to us that the fear of the Lord is what prolonged. What, pro, what prolongs the state of a thing is what prolongs, it's what's prolonged the condition of man. It's what ensured that man was in a position to have the awareness because by fearing God, we're describing the awareness that there is a God. When you fear God, you are acknowledging that there is a God. He's, he's in control. He's built and created everything. And you are subject to him. And because of that, you owe him worship. And let, let it, the Bible says, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. So because if we go back to Noah, everything that had breath was not praising God. Praise was not what God was, was being rendered. He destroyed things. And then, he, of course, he puts the bowl, the rainbow in the sky as a sign that he would not do that again. But we do still see that God does use creation to judge man, to judge sin, to judge man's rebellion to him. But we see the fear of the Lord is what prolongs things. So the Lord puts the fear of him in individuals, in people groups, and those people will live under the fact that they fear God and it's not only just the fear of God, but that is 
as the word of God also states in Proverbs in the first chapter, that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. So the fear of the Lord is the is, is how man enters into the instruction. He enters into fellowship with God to the degree that God begins to uh, instruct him, explain things to him, reveal his purpose for man. And he also, and he doesn't just want man to only know the purpose and doesn't just want man to follow rules and guidelines and laws, but he wants man to know that there's a reward. There's First John talks about that, that there's a reward attached to our obedience, to our faithfulness, to our devotion to God. He blesses us in that. But if man does not fear God, if man is absent of the fear of God, man is going to live in a way that separates him from God. He's going to live in a way that overlooks God and he's going to structure societies, structure his people group. He's going to structure life in a way that leaves God out of the picture. And it's typically when, when God is being left out of the picture, man is going to give to his desires. He's going to give into pleasure when God is not the focus of his life. When God is not the reason, God is not his reason and God is not his way, man is going to fall su subject to his own desires and his own, his own will. And he will be fully set, um, fully set on doing that. Ecclesiastes, I believe it's chapter eight, it says that because sentence against man is not executed expediently, is fully set in the heart to do evil. So because man, even if man is aware of God, if he doesn't have a fear of God, that fear stops. That, that, that when man is governed by the fear of God, and by the fear of God, it is also a spirit, as mentioned in Isaiah chapter 11, when it's mentioning Jesus as the branch, the rod of Jesse. And it said that he was going to come in the spirit of, Wisdom, knowledge, understanding, counsel, might, and he's going to come, the spirit of the Lord, and then the spirit of the fear of the Lord. So the, the fear, the, so, so God released one of the spirits that functions and governs heaven and also functions and governs creation is the fact that all creation surrenders to God, surrenders to the Godhead. That's why the word of God says that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Things that are in earth, things are below the earth, things are above the earth, all things. It says that it pleased the Father to give to that all the, the fullness of the Godhead would dwell in Jesus and that all things would be subject to him. So Jesus Christ is God and he came with the spirit of the fear of the Lord. And that spirit is one of the spirits that does funk, does um, ensure the functionality of man to the degree that man is subject to God. So all creation responds to the sovereignty of God, to the power of God, to the glory of God, to the fullness of God. Every, every, everything has to come subject and has to submit to God. So man, the fear of God is active in the, in the earth. Now, some people will fear God, although they won't serve God and they won't, they won't obey and commit to God and become born again and reconciled to God by way of Jesus Christ. There are some that will still, because everything is subject to God, but the fear of God is one of the many ways that the Lord has, that, that throughout history, through, since the beginning of man, the fear of God has been one of the components as to why man is able to obey, what enables man to obey, how man can respond to God in his design, which is with the fact that he's made to worship. He's made to love God. God is love. And 
the fear of the Lord ensures that man has the awareness that he's to love God back. I'm to serve God with my life and obey God as an act of love, as an act of dedication, as an act of devotion. So the fear of the Lord is, is one of the ways that God has, one of the ways that man has, and, and the fact that there's been a remnant throughout time, we see that although God has destroyed, we, we can read throughout history where um, certain people groups and certain civilizations were destroyed. That's what the Bible says here, that the wicked, the years of the wicked shall be shortened. So there were civilizations, even in the word of God, there were certain people groups who were who died off and they were killed and they never, they never rose again. They never, they never uh, became, and they never became a, um, a empire or a nation again. Um, but it's the fear of the Lord that ensures that our days are prolonged. It's the fear of the Lord that has brought us to the point where we are now, where we are awaiting the return of Jesus Christ. And as we await the return of Jesus Christ, the Spirit of God is pouring out more power. The Spirit of God is pouring out more wisdom, more understanding, more grace, more faith, more, more fear. Because in the Bible also says that the fear of the Lord is to depart from evil. So one of the ways that I know that I fear the Lord and the fear of the Lord is in my heart and the fear of the Lord is beginning to work in my mind is the fact that I am departing from evil. Evil is describing sin. Evil is describing the, 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 the ways that point to the fallen nature of man and the, the attributes of the devil, the attributes of Satan. That is what we could describe as evil. Anything that is not what, what ways, perspectives, beliefs, behaviors that do not glorify God, do not magnify the name of God in the earth. That is what we are classifying as evil, things that do not reveal the goodness of God, the love of God, the peace of God, the righteousness of God. These are things that are classified as evil. The fear of the Lord ensure the fear of the Lord will make the fear of the Lord is to work in a man to a degree that he presses in to God. He looks for God to God for answers. He looks to God for direction. He submits his whole person to God, his mind, his body his soul, his spirit, man, they are all surrendered and subjected to the word of God, the will of God, the way of God. And in that, the Lord will grant man more access to him and he will bless man for his submission. He doesn't want us to think that our obedience is simply just, um, is simply just out of slavery or 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 us being indentured servants. No, he, he, want, he blesses our obedience. He meets us in our obedience. We get, we, gain, we, we, we get to sup and fellowship. Fearing God opens your heart up to more of God. Fearing God, submit, you are submitting and subjecting your mind to God. You are giving your mind to God. You are setting your mind on God. You are setting your eyes, your focus, your desires on God. You are denying yourself. That's one of the ways of fearing God, denying myself, knowing that, that the flesh profit no good thing. So me fulfilling the desires of my heart, and if that's those are not the desires of my heart because I'm in agreement with the will of God, and it's just the desires of my heart according to my flesh and according to my fallen nature, then that's evident that I'm not work that, that that the fear of God is not working, and the fear of God is to work to ensure that if we do fall out of the will of God and we do sin against God, the fear of God is is supposed to work in our person to shift us to turn us back to God to make us aware that we are walking without God. We're supposed to look around and realize that God is not in our endeavors. 
God is not supporting what we're doing. One of the ways that we know we fear God is when we, 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 we obey. We obey his instructions. If we don't know what to obey, God has given us something that we should be doing in our present moment. What was the last thing that God told me to do? We, we can want new instructions when God is saying you haven't done, you haven't been diligent in obeying what you do know. He said that if we are uh, good stewards of little, then he would give us much. We want the much, but we don't want to obey and press into God and be passionate in our, 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 our worship and our dedication to him to the extent that he can give us the more. So he has to reward us with little. He has to hide himself because man doesn't fear him. He has to hide himself because man's not going to respect when he does reveal himself, when he does appear. But the fear of the fear of the Lord makes a man, it help it helps a man to understand his commitment to God. Understand his dedication to God and not understand, he may not understand it to the fullness, but understand it at its, at its basic foundational level of I am to worship God and to seek God and to serve God. And as God sanctifies me of my sin, of my, of the rebellious ways of the the um, God, of the levels of pride that make me go before God. He's going to the, the the fear ensures that we make the type of decisions that we are that we need to continue to make, not just a moment, but the fear of God is to develop a condition and a way of life for us that exalts God. We are exalting God through our lives because God is showing himself as in control. God is showing himself as God. We are letting God be God. And he lets us be a form of God in the sense that he radi he, he shows himself through us. He radiates his glory through us. So man, when he doesn't fear God, because fear is supposed to bring you into the love of God. People want to say that they love God, but they don't fear God to the extent that they want to leave their sinful lives, their rebellious lives, that they don't, they love the world to the degree that it hinders their walk with God. It hinders their, their faithfulness to God. That's, that's showing that the fear of God is not working when the love of the world is still in us. He said, if any man love the world or the things of the world, the love of the Father is not in us. So I know that I fear God when I'm renouncing the world so that I can receive the love of God. God is love. So God wants to show himself as love through our surrendering, our whole surrendering wholeheartedly to him. And, and desiring that his will be done. So, um, there's another verse that I'd like to read. It's also in Proverbs that, um, uh, let me see. It's, it goes, yes, it says that, um, It says that something to, yeah. Um, Proverbs 19, 23, it says, The fear of the Lord tendeth to life, and he that hath it shall, not, shall, be, shall abide satisfied. He shall not be visited with evil. So we read the verse in Proverbs 10 that talked about how the wicked would be destroyed. But it says here that when you have, the, when the fear of the Lord tendeth to, and when you have the fear of the Lord, it, 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 will, it will leave you satisfied and you won't be visited with evil. Why? Because you will be you will be departing from evil and stepping into holiness. You'll be 
becoming more righteous, more really taking on more of the nature of God. And that is the fear of God working in a person. This, but it says the fear of the Lord tended to life. So the fear of God works in the world to ensure that creation is subject to God. Creation reveals God. Man being a part of that. Man and all creation is subject to God. Surrenders to the way of God. The fear of the Lord ensures that life continues. Life is ongoing. Jesus said that we would have life more abundantly. The fear of the Lord. The, the fear of the fact that the Lord said that Jesus is his begotten son and that we are to hear him. The gospel is for the meek and the meek are going to inherit the earth. So the fear of the Lord helps us to graduate and go into the deeper parts of God because it talks about how the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. So the, the fear of the Lord is always a good place to start when you are when you need knowledge of the will of God, fearing God, meaning you reverence God, you respect God as God, you esteem him and he is, um, he is, he is and sovereign in your life. Honoring God in that way is a act of, is, a, is, a, is another act of devotion, it is an act of service to God. Um, but it, it's a way to it's, it's a way that life has been able to be continuously blessed. Man has been blessed, and man has been provided for, protected, preserved from the elements of his world, from the spiritual forces. Because we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Man is not wrestling against flesh and blood but we wrestle against principalities, powers, uh, rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. So there are, there are, when man sinned against God, it allowed the devil to take over the planet. It allowed the devil to tempt man, although he's been sentenced, it allowed the devil and his army, his ungodly uh, um, kingdom of darkness to oppose man, to come against man because we are made in the image and likeness of God. When man doesn't fear God, he steps from up under the covering of God and that exposes him to the enemy. And you become, and man not only becomes an enemy to himself when he's outside of God, he's outside of the will of God, but he's also exposed to the devil, his adversary. So the fear of the Lord ensures that we have life and that we escape death. We were dead in trespasses and sins, but Jesus Christ quickens us by his spirit. He quickens us. So he allows us to tend to life. When, when, you, you, when you accept God through Jesus Christ, that makes you more aware of God more aware of Jesus, more aware of the, the spirit of God and you fall subject to that. You come under the leadership of God and the spirit of God empowers you and gives you power to become like Jesus, makes you more like Jesus, gives you power to, to do the things that Jesus did so that you can overcome the evil and overcome the curse of death and sin that's working in man's life. So the fear of the Lord works by way of the Holy Ghost to ensure that what you do in the name of God tends to life, not to death. And one of the ways that we tend to life is by the will of God. The will of God ensures that life is preserved. Life is sustained. Life is maintained. Life is being cultivated and developed as man fears God by giving God full reign and giving and by giving God the worship and the praise, the honor and the glory that he deserves. 
And it says, he that hath it shall be satisfied. So it's, it's, so that's the completion of man. That's when man becomes whole. When he fears God and the fear of God takes him deeper into the glory of God, reveals the righteousness of God to the point where he can receive it and walk in it. It makes him aware of the fact that God is holy and God wants him to be holy. He begins to take on the fullness of who he is in God as he, because he fears the Lord. So he surrenders himself to the Lord as an act of fear, as an act of reverence, as an act of obedience. He shall not be visited with evil. So obedience to God ensures that we are not being oppressed with evil. When we are being oppressed with evil, we have power in the name of Jesus to confront evil. We confront evil with good, with obedience, by doing what God says, by operating in and radiating the light of God. Let your light so shine so that man sees your good works and it glorifies your Father in heaven. So when we are, we, we are truly letting the spirit of God be the light of our countenance and we are becoming the light of the world, we won't be visited with evil. The Bible also says that the fear of the Lord is to depart from evil. So you're departing from evil when you are showing the goodness of God by obeying God. So it is the will of God that we fear him, but not only fear him, Understanding that fear is one of the ways that we reveal our love for him. We reveal our love for God by fearing him and not desiring to do anything apart from him. Drawing near to him. He said, draw near to me. Draw near to me and I will draw near to you. Looking for God in circumstance. Looking for God to show you the path of life. Because it, 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 the path of life is going to lead you to his presence. And in his presence, there's the fullness of joy. And at his right hand, there are treasures evermore. And it says, wherever a man's treasure is, there will his heart be also. So the Lord wants to be our treasure. Fear the Lord is his treasure. The Lord wants to be the treasure of our hearts. He wants to he wants to visit man. He wants to he wants to visit man in, in, in miraculous ways. The Bible says, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has it entered into the hearts of man the things that God has for those who in Corinthians it says love him, but in the Old Testament it says wait on him. You know, waiting is an act of love. Waiting is an act of love. Waiting is also an act of fear. Waiting is acknowledging that I can't move without God. And while I wait, I'm going to worship. I'm going to worship God while I wait. I'm going to I'm going to seek God while I wait. I'm going to seek his face and I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to seek his face to hear his voice. So that I know what his, his desire is as I walk with him. Um, so I want to leave you with this because the Lord wants us to know that he, he is doing great and mighty things. And there's a fresh wave of glory and power that the Spirit of God is going to pour out for the faithful, for those that are in position and not only physically in position, but position and heart and mind and conduct. He wants, that, he wants to do that in the midst, in the gathering. He wants to do it for the individual, but he moves a lot more lot more impact he, he, he moves in a greater impact within the group 
So I'm going to read this. Second, uh, it's the uh, book of Acts. Chapter 2, verse 41. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. In the same day, they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things in common and sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they continued daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house. They did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. So this is right after Peter preaches to the people after the glory fills the gathering. They've been seeking God for days in a row. So all of this glory has been building up in the spirit because they've been seeking him in the upper room and he pours out his spirit on the people in a mighty way. And we see what that did. We see the response. We see the outcome in the outpour. God brings the people closer together. So when people come together, unified in the name of Jesus, he will bring the people together. So every part of their being will be closely connected to each other. They will be interdependent. They will be much more strong and solidified in their faith because of the fact that now they are more closely involved in each other's lives. They are now more impacted by each other's movements and each other's decisions to the degree that their decisions flow through each other's. So everybody's lives are closely, closely connected and intertwined with each other. The Bible talks in Ecclesiastes about a threefold cord is not easily broken. Two are better than one, but a threefold cord is not easily broken. So we see the Spirit of God is working within the gathering to unite the people together and to unite the people with God. And this is what God is wanting to do, to, to, to bring the people together so that their praise carries more power so that their praise is a, is a, is a, a sweet smell and savor unto the Lord so that their praise and their gatherings and not just when they're praising doing direct spiritual things but even in the gatherings even in the, the fellowships even in the, the the interactions like there's a there's a flow there's a transfer of love there's a transfer of grace because the people there's, there's the love of God that's now working in the people. So fear brings us closer to God to the degree that we, we, we begin to seek God more. We grow more in our desire to find God. And as we fear God, it brings us into deeper and greater love with God. And it brings us into a miraculous, overwhelming fellowship with God. And that is what the sons of God are to look forward to. And not just when we get to heaven, but we get to get experiences that are heaven-like because the gathering, the church is like heaven. The church is like heaven. It is where God is doing his most work. That is where God is, is doing most of his healing, most of his transforming. He's revealing most of what he wants to be known. He's revealing it in the church, in the household of faith in the congregation. So it is the will of God that you and I be there and we stay there and we become permanent. And as God makes us permanent, he's making us perfect. He's making us more like him. 